everyone welcome to the synapse pod and we have the usuals with us that is ayush we have avinash we have chirag we have me of course and we have our pro guest today vikas singh welcome vikas Hello, welcome, welcome vikas <laughs> vikas is our <coughs> pro guest today and he is an nft pro he is the first nft pro guest and again you you've seen the first 30 30 episodes so he's also one of the very few pro guests who have come to our synapse pod so far Thank so you. briefly introducing uh, vikas to all of you uh, vikas is the founder of bliff club and uh, briefly telling of course we'll tell more about it but bliff club uh, bliff club is launching this month in a yeah. few days yeah. and they are building a global nft derivatives platform yes. like you have derivative products in stock markets similar products you can say for nfts which are going to democratize nft for masses uh, of course you can explain it much much sure. much much better but uh, by background uh, one thing i found really really impressive about uh, vikas you is that uh, you were a blockchain dapp developer since 2016 i mean how cool is that How many of you even knew about blockchain and Bitcoin and everything till 2016? I am sure very few of us knew about it. And he was developing apps, which is de- DApps, which is decentralized apps, which is very very cool. I think I'm sure it very much gives you the title of an OG in this space, <laughs> in the space of blockchain itself. And of course, now you've built so much expertise in NFT. So great, great, great to have you. It's a privilege to have you on the pod. Thank you, thank you, thanks a lot. so i would uh, i would essentially um, want to ask vikas about his story yeah before we go to bliff club right oh, yeah. who yeah. is vikas where does he come journey. from what has his journey been how did he first get to know about what what the fuck blockchain was or <laughs> yeah it was like what is Bi- like bitcoin <laughs> so yeah. that 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 is very interesting for us to be very honest very cool first of all thank you gentlemen for bringing me here as a pro guest thanks a lot and uh, yes so uh, i am vikas singh i started as you correctly said for us that i started in 2016 uh, a serendipity actually if you if i may mm. say that uh, things happened very serendipitously uh, a guy in 2016 i was i was working in a telecom company and a guy from i am lucknow came to the company he mentioned that he wanted to do something on top of blockchain my hod brought him and that hod of my department floated a email in the uh, the department that hey there is a guy who wants to do something on blockchain and uh, is there anyone who wants to just support him into actually doing his internship the internship duration was 2 month and i'll let you know like how this 2 month actually contributed a lot in making me go from 0 to 1 in the <laughs> blockchain ecosystem now i because i was like I am congenitally a little bit curious about the stuff, so <laughs> I have broken things a lot. So to, just to understand <laughs> what goes behind the th- behind the scene, so I just immediately I jump on the opportunity and I nominated myself. Mm-hmm. And then what happened is this: a uh, couple of more folks from the same uh, department uh, gave their name as well. And then within the first seven days, eight days, we got to know something called blockchain. because he was making a very very uh, like a ballsy move a ballsy claim that if you happen to use blockchain in uh, removing the fraud what happens around credit card you can save a lot of money around and and it was scale to the scale in in scale it was like billions of dollars he was mentioning mm. he was saying at at that time he was saying like 5 billion dollars was it was it a startup who was hiding no the guy the guy was uh, <laughs> the company was a pretty fairly oh. like a decent msme type i would say mm. they were doing close to 800 crores a mm. year uh, it's a telecom company it was bharti's uh, sister company by the name conviva yeah. mm. and uh, i was there i was there like from the last 4 years so i started my two- mm. career from 2012 so mm-hmm. i was there in the mm-hmm. fifth year running so in the 2016 and it was february 2016 i fairly remember mm-hmm. and then what happened is this like i nominated myself i started uh, like working with this guy understanding and absorbing more what does he know and he was like it's like a kt and he was like mm-hmm. knowledge transfer doing yeah. that so within the first 2 3 days i got to know about this thing his mm-hmm. claim and then everything mm-hmm. was all said and done and then immediately after 3 4 days he started saying that 
can we do something about it can we build our first use case on top of it and that's where like the hunt started okay now you know the concept of blockchain mm. but is there something that you can build on top of it that always comes from the point of it like is it usable or not yeah. right anything i can say there there is a there is a jet which allows you to go from india to let's say the other part of the world in let's say 2 mm. hours but is there is is there any substance to it mm. then we started looking for the substance then what happens in the next 7 days we got to know okay there is we we saw the we saw the, that bitcoin is also there mm. it allows you it gives you very small space to actually write smart contracts but i was like i i can say personally about me at that time i was not like like proficient enough to code the color code stuff uh, in that uh, 40s byte space or something yeah. very 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 mm. very like uh, confined space i would say uh, but on the other hand i got to know about ethereum so i can very confidently say that my because my first exposure toward this technology was coming from the use case driven sentiment hey that if you use this thing you will save this much amount of billions of dollars so i was actually looking the tech side of it yeah. hmm. i was not exposed uh, even of the crypto part crypto of it part of even till the next let's say 15 20 days hmm. i was just like reading the white paper light paper available to me hmm. a and very pure entry a very pure, pure pious entry i would say then <laughs> 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 no i was not bumped into it give me uh, one and i'll give you 1.5 lakh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's a new one <laughs> yeah <laughs> so so a pious entry i would say <laughs> then uh, i started working with that guy and then within one month i i can say that except other than me there was no one to support that guy because for everyone it is just too hard to comprehend mm. yeah. but somehow because i have read about the distributed ledger technology mm -hmm. prior to it even though i was not i would not say that i would not make a tall claim that i have built a distributed system before but i somehow had a understanding of that i was able to let's say overlap the concept of blockchain on mm -hmm. top of that understanding mm -hmm. so somehow i was still thinking okay i can still give a final push i will not give up and the other guy was like also blackmailing me emotionally that hey because there is no other guy you are the last hope <laughs> you, <laughs> yeah <laughs> you have to build something you have to do something <laughs> and we can do it and he was like okay and i was also like consoling him ha ha i'll do it i'll do it <laughs> but there and i was like uh, like i used to go from sai baba to uh, gurgaon back then and i was using daily two hours this this time and two hours this time i was like continuously reading yeah. studying and all these things mm. somehow and i was reading these well, lampert paxes and paxes so these are the protocols where like how ancient roman i would say an empire let's say these are two different islands how are they keeping track of some inventory in such a way that mm. they both have the same same information at all times mm. yeah. Yeah. so yeah. these these things are also like a solved problem back in the day but they were there were some different solution but now things when things have become digitally it is exactly the same problem mm -hmm. how these two distributed or multiple distributed uh, agents have mm -hmm. all the information at all the times in a very synchronized way mm -hmm. that's what satoshi solved somehow mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and then <laughs> the two months after two months i got to know okay there is within the two months range i got to know okay there is something called ethereum and then ethereum has already done some sort of so there was a mix id by the name mix the mm. browser version today what people see is called remix so mm. earlier it was like a desktop okay, no. downloadable client <laughs> you can build mm. things on top of no, it mm. and now mm. it is log it is like remix and now it is browser based so everybody mm. can actually just open it up sure. on browser mm. earlier it was like called lth0 lth1 the client name <laughs> mm. <laughs> and i was like i didn't knew anything about it so i was mm. watching vitalik actually in devcon 0 gave a one hour one hour like generally his talk is like this much long mm. in one hour window he was actually showcasing how the how the mix id generally works yeah. and somehow in that video one guy at a crucial moment in that video vitalik was showing something and some guy passed the projector mm. so i couldn't see what went wrong, what went within that flick of a second mm. and at that time he was like something about to press mm -hmm. i i i couldn't figure out i have to watch the video seven times that okay where he was intentionally moving and and doing uh, it to mimic that thing on my side uh, because i was not able to progress at that was like so so raw uh, or i would say so so ancient kind of thing i would say that i can't figure it out then but ultimately i figured it out okay this is how it is working the very first solution that i built uh, i built of uh, property transfer
the deeds transfer thing mm. it was a very broken use case even though i documented it i very categorically take screenshots of each and every stuff i still it still it is still live maybe probably one day when i'll be famous <laughs> i'll make an nft out of it <laughs> why not why not <laughs> <laughs> so so i i documented it thoroughly mm. and then i figured it out okay this is how you can build small small utility mm. so when i have done 0 to 1 the first use case i got to know it is no no rarer than javascript as well as c c is mixed mm. right but mm. in those two months i you can imagine like i called multiple people Mm. just to figure it out okay hey guys let's say if i'm like i i understood got to know about okay this is blockchain how am i i'm thinking in this way just to cross verify i would call all of you and mm. just discuss the case and even to mm. the the download of that discussion even to before coming on to the point i have to like invest 30 minutes with you mm. and i will say okay now i'm thinking like this and then you will say okay yaar i understand but give me some time mm. and and even after that like i was like making calls to all my friends in let's say i come from nit durgapur so the the network was there i was calling my batchmates my senior and their senior also that if i can get someone to cross verify another pair of eyes another mm. brain to actually see that okay whatever the point that i'm making mm. is is going in the right direction or not so that was those two months in that two months i was able to figure out what blockchain is i was able to download the client I was able to sync it, mm-hmm. and then I was able to build thing on top of it, and I was able to present the use case in within those two months. So that confined timeline helped me accelerate understanding of the all of the stuff. And then after two months, when we are done with it, I was I was very confidently projecting myself. Okay, I know stuff, and I can tell you and where and where sh- you should not use blockchain. Mm-hmm. So those two yeah. months is like a learning on steroids. Crash course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Like I remember my time when I when I was when I had started technically reading about blockchain, and I think one month into it, it's the dumbest I have ever felt in life. <laughs> like it is insane that you are. You were you were at an uh, event by Algorand, and like yeah. similar thing that was happening was someone was opening the ID, working on the ID of Algorand, uh, right. showing that this this is how the ID works and this is how you can code, this is the class you can use and all, and we left. the event like within 5 minutes because Absolutely. everything was going way above the yeah. even even when i was reading basic things yeah. on let's say finance academy or other resources that people can learn from about blockchain what year is this uh yeah technically i started reading about this in 2018 mm-hmm. like after all the whole frenzy ended ah, in 2017 yeah, yeah. right right is when i had no interest in trading anymore <laughs> yeah. so i started yeah. so, so these guys started and investing in 2017 and then learning okay what are we investing in let's <laughs> learn what have we invested in yes. <laughs> there's a reason why i said you have had a very pure entry yeah so <laughs> unlike you like you was in no much glamorous oh yeah yeah, yeah. I that had pay, played a very critical role in every decision that i made hmm. going forward hmm. but yeah please yeah so i was just saying every blog that i was reading every article that i was reading or every text that i was reading i had practically had more questions than <laughs> the text there was in that blog <laughs> yeah. how is this happening how yeah, is this yeah. happening and then the questions just keep piling up absolutely and then the more questions that pile up more dumber you feel yeah. but i think that's the critical point if you if you wait it out a little bit you try to solve a few it, questions yeah. one by one one by one the dots mm. start to connect yes. and it's not even like you'll solve one doubt by one doubt like you'll solve one thing and you'll yes. just clarify three four five more things Absolutely. oh that's how it is working mm. and eventually you create a mental picture mm. of how this whole blockchain thing is working yes. and then that progresses yeah. so wow but you did that all in two months where you built a use case crazy yeah. Yeah, but thanks crazy to paras i remember when he started learning about it he hosted a you know blockchain learning session for oh, us wow. every week wow mm. and i think those sessions were intimidating yeah that's because <laughs> You had to prepare yourself for that session as well. Wow! Yeah. And even though you are preparing for it, yet you are going back home with more confusion. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> it was all confusion. I think it's a very similar to learning a new language, right? In for, for I think it's, it's, I like think it's like learning a new world order. But yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. the whole point because yeah. I can, I felt hmm. stupid because I've I've done lot of coding. I know the entire web to working how it goes, and yet I was feeling that I'm starting from the scratch in this. Oh yes. That was the most I would say. I think someone who has not done web two might get web three very fast, mm-hmm. rather than someone who has done web two and then is trying to. It's a humbling experience. Because you might, <laughs> yeah. Or 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 the person you have to who unlearn a lot of things mm-hmm. before learning actually. Oh yeah, 
or the person who want, really want to like escape yeah. from yeah. that to yeah. can learn that <laughs> really fast yeah. Yeah. but so, then so these but, two months go you build one use case what happens in vikas's life <laughs> also like, yeah before we go to that i wanted to uh, so this roman problem that you said between two inventories mm-hmm. and two islands are you talking about the byzantine problem exactly there was like uh, there was new sen- nuances to it like there was hmm. something called paxes lampert paxes hmm. these guys were taking example of these things and hmm. i am not able to like 100% with 100% assurance like hmm. i can recollect but these were the uh, like i would say the foundations upon which they were setting the problem hmm. or hmm. i would say like or it may be the discussion with my mentor like which i whom hmm. i met like in hmm. the next few months hmm. so now to answer his question now hmm. uh the the curiosity now has peaked because <laughs> now you have done two months of work yeah. but now where to move forward now now what that situation that question like keep arising in a in a person mm. like who's like genuinely curious right now what okay you learned it now what mm. so what i started doing it now i started understanding it and figuring it out are there more people around delhi ncr who's actually looking at this area or not then i started looking at meetup.com and mm-hmm. like figuring it out are there any meetups happening <coughs> around then i serendipitously i figured it out i found one guy who's doing the meetup and in that meetup around 10 12 guys showed up and that was like crazy and that is in july now so february march april okay. may june it took me to figure it out okay what's going on and not mm. but by that time in those two months i think i was like uh, watching videos of ravi chandran guy the the, the mm-hmm. professor ravi chandran right. the who who teaches at berkeley or something yeah, i think yeah, it's yeah. springer mm-hmm. or something mm. yeah so these guys were uh, his teaching and the the guy who took participation in uh, zcash ceremony uh, i'm forgetting his name that time he was a student phd student one of the guy jack miller 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 with the surname of miller so there was a guy like with okay. the surname of miller who participated in zcash <coughs> ceremony hmm. a burning ceremony uh, not burning at some some ceremony they call hmm. it like where the toxic waste used to uh, come up and then they have to discard hmm. but that guy ravi chandran these guys were teaching blockchain hmm. they were teaching the foundational stuff of it so to figure till now i was like going through the text part watching the reading the ethereum docs solidity dot mm. read the docs dot io is my first reference whenever somebody asks i i just throw this thing yeah. even if you wake me in the <laughs> middle of night hey, what is the reference to do the solidity solidity dot read the docs dot io <laughs> <laughs> because it's so it's so it's so it's like the in the world of all the supplementary it's the ncrt yeah yeah <laughs> so yeah. so it's like that and then uh, after 2 months i met a, i met these 10 12 guys i got mm. to know about the scams that are happening in the industry mm. till the till that point i never invested in in the any coin but by that time i started following bitcoin mm. bitcoin i remember personally when i first saw it it was around 24 25000 so in in that february to june range i don't know which month i are you I talking saw. about dollars or inr i and oh so my god it's like 300 to 400 dollars like oh, back wow. then so i <laughs> <laughs> wow <laughs> that was ethereum's price last year almost at this yes, time yes. <laughs> so yeah then i figured it out that there is a guy a sardar guy uh, mm-hmm. who's uh, who's great at explaining stuff who's great at the technical part of the bitcoin really really well and he was claiming that he has been mining blockchain since mm-hmm. his college days mm-hmm. and that what again piqued my uh, like curiosity okay what the hell is going on there Mm-hmm. now i started understanding bitcoin now I, i i didn't i i started looking at the bitcoin docs but it is again like way too technical for me back then mm-hmm. so i stopped looking at the like really deeper level like the foundational level mm-hmm. then i said okay this is not my game i never so it all okay th- anybody's uh, background is equally important like at what layer they at up to what layer they will dig mm-hmm. right if a person has actually been a open source developer and like really collaborating in the libraries building and stuff or contributing heavily in open source they would not stop until unless they peel every layer of the protocol understand the truth from the layer itself or the code itself and then they will say whatever they have to say i was mm. not like that guy i was mm. like just listening to 10 amazing people mm. i just take the things from the smell test 
perspective mm-hmm. is eight out of those ten people is going in that direction from the technical point that's of view. That's the direction. Yeah, yeah. that's the direction because yeah. that's the direction bl- uh, blockchain also takes. Very mm. <laughs> true. Yeah, or or so. pr- price indicators of any coins. <laughs> that way i will not go <laughs> if that was the uh, way to do it then the twitter sentiment analysis yeah. would be like yeah. <laughs> that would have been a separate business yes <laughs> true 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 so uh, i'm talking about the technical part of it mm. just because i know what to like take the help and where not to take the help so of course the price picking and the stock picking things you can do the dd by yourself mm. but i was not the guy like who will peel every layer of it and then take the things uh, like understanding from that level so mm. i was like almost the the developer who can actually make the use of it because mm. that's what i did within the first two months itself mm. right because that was how i was introduced to the uh, mm. to the blockchain mm. so in july i was attending this meetup i figured out that there are two three really really smart people i went into this uh, india bits uh, telegram handle hmm. are you all yeah. are you all there i've i've heard about it but i haven't seen okay. it okay so this was like the i was 147th member in that but today it's like 4000 5000 but the guy the guy who's coordinating it really really well and then the people were actually genuinely talking about the real stuff there mm-hmm. so first time i got to know i was exposed to the community part of it via the telegram group via the meetup group mm. and all these things mm. so i generally say that i am the product of a community mm. because everything whatever i have learned about this technology is was like completely discussing with people like you folks right yes. because i think that that's what i can fairly tell you like 90% of the people like us has actually understood everything by bumping into the right people asking genuinely yeah. interesting yeah, question yeah. getting those answer and being genuinely curious mm. to understand and then again ask an intelligent question mm. and the loop goes on mm. it can't be more yeah so mm. that's that's how i think uh, we were like able to peel the layers i would say mm. so that's how my journey started with a mentor now this guy actually took me under his wing kind of this way because while i say so it was like absolutely true whenever i used to call him with my genuinely genuine questions so he used to give me like undivided attention for like even for half an hour i was like on call in the office sitting in the couch and like just talking to him hey i read this lempert paxus now what so he's he'll say okay go read this thing those all things actually made my life pretty easy from the mm. perspective to clear the signal from the noise then mm. it happened really really and then it all builds up the accumulation mm. goes very very cumulatively and then you can simply by the surface value of like if somebody was like if let's say tomorrow somebody will come hey vikas i want to use blockchain here within decent enough time very small amount of time you can actually tell him the pros and cons and why it should mm. not be done mm. yeah. with the with the fair experience that i was having from 5 <coughs> 6 mm. years of technology experience so i can actually consult a person with a let's say 80 to 90% accuracy mm. i would not say that with the 100% because there is might be some cases mm. which i have never seen which might can actually contribute in making mm. the mm. idea go kaboom so yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. <laughs> so that's that's that was my journey and then in that whole year i i think i gave around 15 to 17 interviews and those interviews like were coming from all of the companies wipro infosys so like people should be very uh, very aware of this fact that even in 2016 these companies or somebody in these companies were actually genuinely trying to build something on 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 bitcoin okay everybody wow. was yeah wow. everybody was asking me like hey do you know how to do color code uh, color code mm. uh, color code uh, bitcoin what is color coded bitcoins used to be the thing mm. that's mm. how you like create your own your own uh, uh, you carve out a small specific thing in the bitcoin blockchain yeah. that can that you can actually use for let's say if you use 10 bitcoin in the space that you use that space very meticulously so those become color coded bitcoins so you can use those bitcoins the way you want to use them hmm. that's yeah. very crazy so i think name cheap or uh, no not name cheap uh, name coin dot i i think they were the one like who started with the bitcoin blockchain and hmm. they started putting your like the dns or domain name into the bitcoin blockchain and that's hmm. how it started but you saying these wrong. companies infosys wipro tcs they were always really curious about it and i can gauge i can gauge okay. that because the kind of questions they were asking to were me. intelligent yeah. yes yes where they are they today just out of curiosity if, if you i don't know i never joined them <laughs> yeah, because i remember i have a friend whose sister is an hr mm. at deloitte mm. and back in position she was reviewing mm. lot of profiles Mm. for blockchain developers mm. like i have a friend in sap mm. in 2018 they were thinking of making a project like for a big mncs mm. on blockchain 
yeah. with blockchain as a service bus they call it yes so this thing was very very well established in my mind that this technology is not going anywhere absolutely yeah out of all of us actually yeah. out of all of us actually it was avinash and manik is also one of the co-founders at leaf who 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 is in usa right now so he's mm-hmm. not in the pod mm-hmm. so these two they had seen the technical part of blockchain mm-hmm. in 2018 after every every thing had fizzled out yep. in the crypto space part of Absolutely. the blockchain so these guys so they won the uh, x prize mm-hmm. you were aware with the x prize yeah. right the billionaires co funding to correct, solve correct. a grand problem yeah. so yeah. they had won this x prize <coughs> and they got this chance to interact with the likes of Peter Dam and this Elon hmm. Musk hmm. Larry Page yep. and all of them hmm. and they had discussed and when they wow. came back hmm. until i would say if i'm correctly remembering until 2 3 months all they talked about was blockchain uh, yeah and it yeah. just honestly to, and and i reflect back on it that it made very little sense yeah hmm. but okay bitcoin is so down hmm. ether is so down it was at what 20, what 12 000. lakhs ah. bitcoin and inr and now it is at what hmm. 70 hmm. 80k it doesn't hmm. make any sense hmm. okay we were talking blockchain then he, he was the guy who told me that you know a 16z has carved out of what hmm. good amount of money yeah. 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 for blockchain i was like why why is this happening and then the curiosity sort of picked up in all of us that we should hmm. start reading more about it oh yeah but 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 that was crazy yeah i think that we were crazy. still pretty i would say novice that we didn't realize how big it is yeah. oh yeah like i remember i went to one place in san francisco you are not like a, you are not alone in recognizing that a lot of <laughs> people <laughs> does yes. i'm not talking about like you know, many many still are yeah, yeah absolutely i'm not talking about that okay i think even understanding the depth of what this technology mean true so like i remember i was in san francisco and there was a big warehouse like a old warehouse and there was like like 15 20 big desk Mm-hmm. with over 50 startups working in that and they all were blockchain startups wow crazy and this is about again june 2018 wow and i like right now i feeling goosebumps looking at that thinking of that scene yeah and i was watching and everyone was talk talking about it and again i was feeling so dumb over there <laughs> i came back in india i was still i was i stopped working in every, on everything else and mm-hmm. still studying about it mm. i was like why are you just doing this all the time <laughs> <laughs> yeah and i think it fizzled out because again i didn't get it but kudos to you the way you have picked up and you know worked on it is something yeah for the longest time we just felt that it was just a technology and like just any other technology some new upgrade to xyz thing or finance ka koi some naya upgrade or something like that right. but we just didn't understand that it was a new world order it oh, was yeah. a challenge to order. everything oh, yeah. that was ever built being looked at a new way and how radically blockchain could change everything from I, the ground up i can definitely tell you couple of more points there from the 2016 year itself because that was like where i can be very convincingly say that whole world toppled for me because hmm. the more i was reading so i used to carry that bitcoin white paper in my bag hmm. and i used to have hmm. a pen because nice. every time you read it and what i have done like i had a handwritten thing everything on top of it every word which i feel okay he has written this word he or she it they may be hmm. whoever it is <laughs> so these guys have written these words for a specific reason so it was like i was like i was acting like a sherlock holmes without knowing that <laughs> it. Uh, without <laughs> knowing that i like i'm acting like a like sherlock holmes uh, yeah <laughs> that <laughs> has to it it has to have a different meaning for me <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah the mo- i think i so i've not read the entire white paper but i'm sure you understand it by now does it feel like poetry at the end of the day like <laughs> boss it is it is like it is like a every page of it it feels like that it's like eight or nine chapters of life <laughs> okay. those those nine pages because in every page <laughs> this guy again he eat she it they maybe whoever <laughs> maybe like these guys have actually solved something very mm. novice and it it looks like a very connected thing if if you give that time to yourself you will actually realize this mm. thing so maybe i can go to the length to say that it looks like a very poetic version of things mm. <laughs> for me the most uh, important change uh, in my thought process with respect to white paper and bitcoin was i read this book called digital gold mm-hmm. and uh, i heard it in a podcast Bye. where uh, i i am uh, forgetting the authors but the name is digital gold so and uh, it is actually the history of bitcoin dating back to 2009 mm-hmm. and how in 2008 um, the argentinian currency crisis led to a group of people coming in and saying hey the government is devaluing the currency we need to make our own currency do something so that so so there was a story that by the time a woman would 
go do a do a daily worker kind of a work oh, get paid yeah. and come back the uh, the See, vegetables yeah. she could buy would become half yeah with the same money that she had earned oh, in the yeah, morning yeah. and those were the social so it started of a social movement and then it completely yeah. changed into a very financial kind of a product so that book that that book is highly recommended and like it took me through the journey of digital currencies essentially i i was when i was like doing that research and trying to understand mm-hmm. because as as you guys correctly mentioned mm-hmm. these things will not make a connection at first you got to go into deep into that rabbit hole like from where it might have originated mm-hmm. so the the case that you are saying mm-hmm. and then i think there is a country by the name greece which actually get into this problem that where the people who used to own a lot of money then they were suddenly their bank account are freezed then they are only allowed to actually take out let's yeah. say $100 a day or something and then the whole value devalue like the hyper inflation hyper inflation like the zimbabwean currency mm. Mm. all these things so i i try to understand this thing like that boss i try to zoom out first mm. and first of all i started questioning the whole ecosystem in a such a way that okay then i started asking really really solid question can the bank go down in 2016 i was mm. really trying to understand okay from this lens mm. what if the bank goes down mm. and if a bank is going down what it is taking with itself mm. because it's like sinking of a titanic yes. it's not going to take its just its life it's going to take the life of a lot of people who are dependent upon it so yeah. that's what i started asking so these questions started revealing a lot of information and the, on the other hand i'll tell you like how dumb is the media because Bitcoin's journey or cryptocurrency's journey not only educates you it enlightens you from the point that what's wrong about the ecosystem and the media which they somehow don't know what they are speaking but they claim that whatever they are saying is the pious or the sacrosanct truth yeah. mm. and the beauty of all learning of bitcoin or cryptocurrencies and uh, this technology is this you know the truth that what this technology stands for these guys are claiming that this technology is like it's just going to be a fad <laughs> and then you see their claims and the mm. depth of their claims mm. and then you can laugh about it because they are just like far from the reality yeah. mm. sure. like for a for a single for a single joke we all must have here like a government can ban this technology this mm. is just not possible when i understood this thing and my peers or like my seniors who understood that okay this guy understand the technology then they all used to say the same thing that hey what if the government do something like this and i said that can you can you cut the transatlantic cables that provides you the internet if hmm. you can't then you if can't. you can't <laughs> till that point let us not be worried about that <laughs> let us just keep learning and understanding this stuff hmm. till the point that i am okay i am having big enough caesar to cut the transatlantic cables yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so so i think those areas <coughs> can only like you can you can hold you can understand these things really deeply only if you have given yourself enough time to go through go through that till the transatlantic wire mm-hmm. <laughs> that is going through yeah. that is carrying the internet the go through the rabbit hole and then mm-hmm. understand it from that point so i think that helped me to understand and have the firm belief mm-hmm. that this technology is go- here to stay so mm-hmm. that 2016 revelation revelation about this technology help me pass through this 18 19 the crypto winter and the no. technology bin- winter because i was completely bullish that this technology is here to stay and you can continue to every increment every day that you can continue to like push through this this uh, time hmm. it's going to give you a much greater result on hmm. the other side hmm. i think uh, like every time when any person has these small revel- like revel- like revelations revelations of how commercialized and how uh like you cannot control the underlying technology and how how can you actually build on top of that and you can you can build financial uh, products out of it you can build different products like telecom in telecom in lending in everything you can build out of it so these kind of small small revelation i think is what helped the blockchain from 20 2007 till now yep. that it's it's like the pyramid is increasing in size and mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and, and uh, we are building the different kind of products on top of it which yeah. which is setting a proper base for it yeah. which which can actually uh, it's like it's like a growing eiffel tower which is growing yes. in terms of yeah. size and mm-hmm. volume yes. every day absolutely yeah, yeah. Or, very honestly well like uh, i look at your story and i hear what you say so it feels like blockchain is the point where technical people meet philosophers 
Yeah. Mm. Yes. Like every technical person <laughs> wants to be a philosopher and every philosopher wants to understand the tech part of it. So it's, it's a very beautiful juncture, I must say. But then something crazier happens. Like you, you see the Bitcoin, you see the blockchain tech, Ethereum <coughs> happens, a lot of frauds come on top of that. And then comes the craziest of them all, which we it call it will now the craziest of them all, which is the NFTs, <laughs> non-fungible tokens, which is where you are uh, doing a lot of stuff today. Yeah. So please, please take our viewers and us also through your version or your perception of what is an NFT. Why do NFTs exist? Why are they here to exist? Why the hell doesn't, why the fuck does someone buy a board hmm. for 100 ETH? What is in a board? Sure. Tell us about hmm. it. Or, or, and also, is it, a, is it really the intersection of technology and art? Or is hmm. it just art? Is it just technology? Hmm. Or what is it? Art is just a very, very small part you of it. But exactly. But yeah. You yeah. Know how, big, how big it can be. Yeah. Cool, cool. I'll, I'll have... I'll, I'll answer it in a very different way. I'll start with the first, the, the way the whole internet was started. Hmm. So I'll, I'll go to that uh, point because first of all, like the way we understand the internet of today, it was not neutral back when it was started. Yeah. It was, it was like a internet with a private, like a property, hmm. right? Everybody was not allowed to actually peek into and how it is like, gonna use be useful for the common common people so proprietary information network that's what the internet used to be known as back in the day proprietary information network so proprietary means you can understand like it was not open for everyone it was like just for a group of people who have, might have invested in the money might have invested in the development mm -hmm. of it so when the internet genuinely started for the common people it was never thought from the perspective that that the person who is putting the information on the internet that identity in a privacy centric way or somehow like by a privacy privacy preserving way the identity should be kept with the content let's say what if let's say you really like today okay. you really like some blog what if you really want to genuinely pay the guy or tip the guy today it's very hard why because you are you have built your blog site, but the mm. guy who has been writing is in Tanzania or Argentina writing for <coughs> uh, like one fifth of a cent mm. per word for mm. you. And then you mm. are making tons of money on top of it. But there is no way to pass on that money to that guy. Why? Because there is no way yeah. to attach that Tanzanian guy or a Argentinian guy's identity or person's identity to with the, with the content. Right? Yeah. Sure. So, so back in those days, the internet was just created to, to, to dis, uh, let's say, completely uh, remove the uh, controls of the publishing power. Because earlier, who controls the publishing house? The books publishing mm -hmm. house controls the world because they, they can control, the control oh. whatever the word that is going to get printed and people yeah. will read only that part. Yeah. So that internet was created to disintegrate those parts in such a way that the information dissemination goes to the far further and the widest mm. corner of the world. Mm. But everything was good and everything is still good. But there could have been now the new, new, new crazy scams. Again, I would say started coming up. Like we all, we all are aware of Web2 scams that happens yeah. even till today, right? Mm. Even the secure socket layer is there. But the end point is so loose that people can still lose a lot of money. That's why mm. you have a lot of bank mm. problem, right? And all these things. Because people cannot keep their things mm. like very strictly in the confidential way. Then there is this thing called, I generally call it as a new internet, came in. And this new internet started saying, boss, whatever you are going to publish, whatever you are doing till today, that's all good. But let's start attaching the identity with whatever you are publishing now. And that's where the blockchain comes in. Blockchain hmm. allows to, to keep the identity very, very near or almost sticky as a sticky note on top of whatever you are pasting. That's where you see the, when you see etherscan dot com you see the content in the bottom part of it but you always see from yeah right that's how these so you're uh, referring to the wallet address 
in yes. this case. Okay. Yes. Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. that's how the identity is preserved. Because mm-hmm. that's how you can have a pseudonymous identity, but still say what you really want to say. Yeah. That's how these two <coughs> MEV bot people used to communicate on chain and congratulate on to each other that you are doing good job and stuff. That's mm-hmm. how scamsters in, in, in blockchain mm-hmm. communicating with Vitalik. If Vitalik uh, will... Uh, I will send my money to Vitalik and I will keep 10%. Like the, the winter mute follow-up issue. Yeah. The op- optimism, optimism tokens and stuff. Mm. So that's what the that's what I look... Whenever I have to tell someone, then I say that even internet has, has gone through a logical extension now. Mm. That's where the blockchain is coming mm. in. And that's where I see personally that internet is also maturing now. Mm. This... Web 3.0 is nothing but a let's say incremental step mm. in the in the in the direction where the internet also can mature mm. and can can take its logical next step. And now on top of this, on on this internet, new businesses. Of course, whenever let's say if I give you in a scenario like what if the 5G will what will 5G solve for us? Maybe robotic surgery, maybe 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 faster MMORPG games, right? All these mm. things mm. solving the solving the most crucial problems, maybe right? But what if uh, I would say that uh, this internet, this new internet allows you to also keep things very near to you without telling anyone. Hmm. So that's where I think these new use cases, the finance, uh, finance use cases came in. Now the recent one, I would say the gradually. So I generally see that the NFT audience, the people who are actually have seen a little bit an iota of crypto. And those people are entering into NFT. I personally have seen, seen these things firsthand that looking at you guys also, a small substrata of those people. These people are more intelligent than the novice buyer of cryptocurrencies. Hmm. We were actually novice when we bought, let's say, we might have bought the first cryptocurrency out of because Paras suggested just a pin. Hmm. <laughs> and no, we I all said <laughs> Goldman Sachs recovered someone's <laughs> loan by selling their Bitcoin. This is the next one. <laughs> <business. laughs> yeah, yeah, it's yeah. an asset now. Yeah. yeah. True, true. Hmm. Yeah. If and, you can do that, yes, why and not? we did that. And yeah, you, I think you are absolutely right. That, yeah, I mean, makes sense that on an average, an NFT buyer would be, you can fairly assume that yeah. they would know a little more about But that's also the reason that it has a high paywall, right? It has a high barrier to entry also I would, to, to have yes, a I would say I would Somebody say is putting in like thousand dollars will definitely give a more thought than putting in two dollars. <laughs> no, no, you can buy a ten dollar NFT also. In a fraction ownership. No, 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 the cheaper, no, cheaper yeah, yeah. like Hello Kitty is. <laughs> yeah, but so what he's saying is the barrier to entry is the technological uh, integration with the MetaMask or your wallet and then putting money one. into those kind of wallets and then going to <coughs> a website and getting that. No, but he's arguing that maybe exactly. it's by design that people who enter into NFTs I would are say I would say because like smarter. if you if you cut two two sections, like let's say 2018-19 from where because this one I, I said this thing first everywhere hmm. <laughs> that this was the first beer beer market of NFT hmm. and we saw yes. that NFT actually I, mean, I will come to the point because you asked a very interesting question hmm. whether it's a technology whether it's an art hmm. I would say it is still goes on the fair share of art hmm. like I would say my mind skews towards art hmm. it's the technology which is which is actually now uh, picking all the traits of physical Mona Lisa hmm. and actually holding the true value uh, through the beer market of everyone. Because if you see, uh, let me answer your question mm-hmm. in a more mm-hmm. detail than, mm-hmm. think about a Mona Lisa. Mona mm-hmm. Lisa is just increasing in value year after year. Yeah. And they are putting a lot of money in preservation. Even, yeah. trust me, I think, I don't know, I have a doubt because I do not have any, I do not have any exposure to seeing Mona Lisa by my eyes. And because I've seen it, let's say even if I see it, I I just cannot say that whether it's not a replica, it's a genuine one. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, because uh, nobody knows like whether it is genuine anymore or not. Mm. It can be a pitch perfect replica of Mona Lisa, right? Mm. My my say my point is this: a physical art was uh, is or was valuable after any artist's death. It it becomes even more rarer because every art is an expression of an artist of a different world that is in his or her mind or he, she if they, because mm. we have to be accommodative of everyone mm. so these guys actually can create things in their mind and and then they can put it out with the brush mm. the expression mm. now if an artist dies it becomes even more valuable because now the expression of that artist is now this scarce uh, 
hundred paintings, hmm. right? Hmm. So I'm saying like Mona Lisa supplies. Right. <laughs> supply is that capped now. Yes, yeah. the supply is capped now. Yeah. Uh, yes, <laughs> true. And then, then I'm saying that okay, let's take this concept to uh, digital arts. Hmm. The way because it has been this just the first beer market, but I was genuinely looking at B A Y C. I was genuinely looking at all hmm. these M A Y C. The, of course, the Yuga Labs, the Doodles, and the other ones which actually became talk of the town. Goblin is definitely one which which actually. Took people. It was like a Noah ship in the beer run. Hmm. It yeah, was everybody. Yeah. Everybody was riding the journey of their <coughs> four hour long. Hmm. No, I don't know what nonsense uh, Twitter space, but people were hooked and they were like yeah. talking in Goblin language and all these things. The Goblin language, by the way, is hala. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone is going like yeah. people on Twitter space. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. It all gibberish. Yeah, it's yeah. It's yeah, it felt hours. like people were shouting. They would yeah. raid other people's Twitter space. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And more than yeah. 1500 people tuned in at a time and listening. To that for four hours. Four, four hours. That's that's madness. He disclaimer he, here. He's a goblin town NFT owner. Yes. <laughs> I, I was about to say that we own it and we have actually made one of them our musket as well. Like uh, we we really feel that the the way uh, the Truth Lab teams is explaining the storytelling part of this Truth Lab is just impeccable. Mm. That's where we think like these guys can actually like uh, really keep the command in their hand mm. uh, from the perspective of storytelling but coming mm. back to the nfts in general mm. that i personally was very very interested in looking at the float price of bayc seeing that that it is held its peg if you say 1 eth equals to 1 eth they actually hold the peg of 100 ether yeah. almost 80 to 90% of the time right. mm. it didn't break that it broke because of that crazy bend let's down. say bend down, bend down. the bend second down. one was like it, the, the 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 legal it issues that mm-hmm. the legal issues also they they got in like Absolutely. it was like a hitler nazis and all these things yeah, yeah. These, these things because then this market is all sentiment driven so these hmm. people were essentially everybody was paying attention to all these things so technologically and some fud also contributed and pushed it down hmm. to 67 eth or 66 eth hmm. because people were about to get liquidated because people took loan on bando hmm. when the floor price was 125 yeah. so yeah. they were given 60 percent of the yeah. money of the floor price of those nfts <coughs> so i hmm. personally have seen this thing firsthand that and i'm speaking after the beer market is like let's say at least done now because if something is now about to happen then it will take the whole market down hmm. but i personally feel till now that NFT exactly, let's say if you would have put money in the right NFTs, Moonbirds, Azuki, everyone contributed to that. Of course, Azukis and all, except BAYC, nobody is like at the same price which they were earlier. But mm. at least, let's say if you would have put up your money into any one of these blue chip NFTs, you would not have lost that much money, which you would have lost even if putting your money in, let's say, Ethereum itself. Ethereum mm. was like 80% down from the top yeah. of 4,800, right? Yeah. So that was not, that didn't happen for at least for BAYC or Yuga Labs, mm. I would say. At least in Ether terms. At least in Ether terms, terms that's in because, because I'm mm. saying that economy runs only on uh, Ether, Ether, yes. Mm. yes. So that's why, I, that's why, that's how I felt that this technology has more inclination towards art because it preserved the price. Mm-hmm. I was just looking at the preservation of the price and that technology helped to preserve the price but that was art or the utility, the community because even if you buy art, that art rotates in a very specific circle. That's how the art preserves its value. You will not go buy like a Van Gogh and pay everything that you have yeah, and then you will yeah. have just that thing. So do, do, you, do you also think uh, that, thus, uh, that these coins, right? And the, all the owners of these coins, they have their affinity to the founder of the coin. Like whether you say Satoshi or you say uh, Vitalik. Uh, Vitalik or anyone. However, That's as soon as... And, and uh, we are just looking at community feeling. True. When you shift to NFTs, suddenly people form the community around items. Yes. And not the founder. Hmm. And since you can own each item the affinity and the loyalty to the community is much more hence price preser- preservation would yeah, you say maybe maybe the the dis- the diversity of the people's mind hmm. which doesn't let the price go really really down because in the in the crypto part the whole market thinks 
like in a single way or a single dimension yeah so maybe that can be the also, contributing say, yeah, factor yes that's a that's yeah. a nice way to look at yeah, it yeah the, the ownership factor is much True. more in nfts ultimately they are all communities one, one yeah, one yeah. Yeah. Fund, exactly fund and it's is fungibility there, right? there's no fungibility my yeah, bitcoin is same as your bitcoin yeah. but my and if bold ape is not same as your bitcoin so my ownership is much more and mm. the loyalty feeling is much more and hence i preserve the price right right and and also what happened is like people started this <coughs> ग्राउंड अप यू कैन नॉट फील द सेंस ऑफ बिलोंगिंग 
with the either the either the crypto part or with the nft part mm. the way you are saying that sneaker because that again why would people uh, why this uh, shaki no shak onil yeah, actually yeah. sold more sneakers than than adidas in a single year or something like yeah. this yeah. because that guy dropped his deal first of all with adidas or reebok and then he said that boss i would want to build a brand which is affordable for a common person because somebody's mother some young kids mother told shak onil that hey my st- my my son can't buy these sneakers you mm. you are selling it at a very high price he cancelled a 1 billion dollar deal that's what he mm. says like on one mm. record that's on mm. record but this is again cultural movement from yeah. ground up yeah. so think about like justin bieber uh Snoop Dogg, Snoop Dogg yeah. and yeah. Paris Hilton, yeah. Eminem, yeah. all these people have bought the top, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. and a common person must have made a good enough money yeah. to buy to buy I think a land somewhere in the classiest of the. Yeah. 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 At the top. Touching on the cultural part, touching on the cultural part. So I follow this artist, like I follow many artists on Twitter. I follow this artist Zero X M G, who is from India, Nepal. Mm. So no, don't talk. Everyone knows. Yeah. So uh, I mean, I have seen her tweet so many times that at early part, like early phases of NFTs, they were all artists buying NFTs of other artists. Mm. So that's how the culture of NFT and turning mm. of NFT emerged. Wow. Artists were buying. It's similar thing we mm. uh, actually heard from Kalamit, who is mm. making NFT, mm. like Sandeep. Uh, that artists were actually buying, uh, mm. so they they didn't have the problem of like this chicken mm. egg problem, like who's gonna <laughs> be the consumer, who's gonna be the creator, and all. so that 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 actually uh, led me. Mm. There's something which is very uh, interesting happening right now. That why you're discussing about this blockchain and like crypto and NFT as a cultural movement. In fact, yesterday only I was discussing with Paras that even if a generic audience, whatever problem they're solving, whatever solution they're making. If they're not converting into a movement, hmm. it's not gonna create that impact that you really hmm. want to see. Hmm. So, so I think in that ways, blockchain has to be has to given credit in a lot of other terms as well. Hmm. To understand. Yeah, yeah, I think this groupism, right? Uh, in terms of when you said that Eat Denver, you saw a lot of geeks, but NFT NYC, you saw a lot of artists from any walk of life or yeah. people who were. So, uh, don't you also think say like Ethereum is built as an infrastructure layer? and infrastructure is usually developed by developers who are geeks right. so hence the community and the group and right. whereas the nft community is built by believers and dreamers so believers <laughs> right that <laughs> so right so so yeah. so so there every like the, it just opens up the tam but i want to understand one more thing that apart from art and collectibles and things to flex nft is also said to be a technology you want to be used for attaching identity to a lot of other type of content mm-hmm. whether it is mm-hmm. a property sales deed mm-hmm. which can in be in fact in fact i, I heard this in like salt lake city <coughs> or oh, music Utah. so you you were mentioning about the sale deed early on you just mentioned about the sale deed so i read i'm not sure if it's 100% true that in the early days when the concept of nft was mentioned in white papers it was called deeds actually okay yeah because yeah, because in theory or even in practicality you never really own a property you own the sale deed of that property which yeah. proves that you are the owner correct so it's hmm. a proof of ownership yes hmm. so the which later became nft yeah. so nfts essentially are proof of ownership only hmm. what we see a lot of it is like proof of ownership of a certain art, art. Hmm. yeah or proof of ownership of some membership pass or membership that hmm. entitles you to a certain utility Sure. Like a like a county club membership, yeah. a golf club yeah. membership, which Gary. entitles to <laughs> yeah. conference. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, all of that. So that is why I feel the proof of ownership part of it is yeah. what will take it very yeah. very Absolutely. long, and the art part of it, like uh, Chirag, you were asking in yeah. initially that whether it's art, whether it's tech. Yeah. Yeah. I think right now it's a lot of art. It's transitioning to a lot of utility, but eventually, yeah. eventuality is a lot of ownership yeah. uh, being proven yeah. through. NFTs. Essentially, I see every NFT project as a startup, right? With and oh, yeah. because it's a community of people who believe in a certain thing, mm. and then they're building technology on back of it and creating utility for their own members. So it just becomes the early adopter enters the project before the sale of the product. I want to bring in one Very more one more interesting thing that happened, which boosted my confidence with NFT even further was when Twitter brought in the verification part of your profile picture. Mm-hmm. 
with the NFT, whether you actually own it or not, by connecting mm. your MetaMask and putting your address in that. I think that was a huge thing because before that, everyone used to say that, okay, mm. I can put a picture of a yeah. Bodeb, who's going to verify mm. it? Mm. But yeah. that hexagon <laughs> over there, over yeah. DP, yeah. is now a real proof. Correct. Yeah. But I have a contrarian view on that. Okay. Mm-hmm. I think it, it, it probably matters to a lot of people, but it does not matter to the right kind of people. Because if all of us are sitting, how many of us will unnecessarily put a board as our PFP? That's like if a so, rich person is wearing a ornament, which is not gold, yeah. people will think it's a gold Yeah. With, with their community. But at the same time, if they are caught <laughs> in that way, then they'll be <laughs> yeah. Would they take a risk? The, the disincentive of being called out yeah. Yes. and saying, prob- in my opinion, it is bigger than the verification. Yeah. The incentive to verify yeah. is smaller. Mm. The disincentive of being caught is yeah. much bigger. But yeah. I understand For a reputed it, it might not be a flexible, like big thing among the audience because okay, it's okay, nobody's gonna verify. But a huge thing when you talk about millions of people. Yes. If I want that. to, you are right on that. Like if I want to, if I just don't want to flex to four of you, what if I want to flex to four million? You know. You know what? Then. Probably it matters. So a lot of freelancers on Fiverr and freelancers who are from Kazakhstan, Africa right now, they all have a DP of Bodex. <laughs> you know that? <laughs> yeah. oh, wow, that's, that's a, that's a crazy that's find. Crazy. That's a crazy thing because, and this is what happened. So I was talking to one. You mean on Twitter, verified? On, on, on Telegram. On Fiverr. On Telegram. Fiverr and Telegram. Telegram. But there's no verification. No, not on, not on verification. No, of course, no verification of course. there. So, and honestly, it just like widened my eyes. I was like, you're a Bodex owner. Ah. And he said, yes. I have no way to check. No way to ah, check. Absolutely. He has a board of kitty club. But the point account. is that they, they understand the value, value of, of it. it that that's why. set them apart. Yes. Yeah. 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 When tens of people are sending me quotation for a I, project. I, I have seen millions of bags sold in sub, uh, like Southern Market with Apple logo. Yeah. Oh yeah. So again, again. <laughs> I, I see the same kind of dynamics play here, but specifically for the top tier rich people owning. Uh, specifically rich people. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm specifically talking about people who are the top tier, one percent, two percent, who actually drive the market sure. by their influence of ownership, right? Yeah. If let's say Snoop Dogg takes a Moblo pen or drives a black Mercedes, which is an S class, all his followers will be will oh, want yeah. to do the same, right? Yeah. So for these people. They cannot take the risk of um, just screenshotting or so right uh, specifically because they like and that that's one quote which I also wrote on Twitter uh, very candidly right uh, like reputation is more like a bank account where the deposit is made every day but the withdrawal is usually all at oh, once. Oh wow! Yeah, very so, nicely said. Hmm. So it, they cannot just um, take this. The risk is way bigger hmm. to True. lose it all I, suddenly. So yes. they will buy it at that fifteen hundred ETH price. At that 500 ETH, they'll make you rich. I, and, I, and they I would see. democratize the, their own wealth into yeah, the market. Correct. Is, is flex really the art or is flex really the price at which you buy? I think it's both. I think the brand, if, if I'm buying a Mercedes, right, I can buy a C-Class. But what if I buy a no, What AMG? is it more? Like, of course it is both. Yeah. Like you can't say I bought this, hmm. this denim for a million dollars. Hmm. And it belongs to a brand that no one knows. Of yeah. course, it has got to a lot to do with the brand also. Yeah. But was it what? What is it more? In so the I think dollars? very interestingly, it is what matters to my community. <laughs> so if my community <laughs> looks at the dollar price, right? I would state the dollar price of what I've bought. But if my community and this very consumer understanding, yeah. if my community only is blockchain lovers who just talk in ETH, who bloody buy their burgers in ETH, then I would talk ETH. Mm. So essentially, or or a project, or or Clonex, or the NFT which I'm talking about. So but eventually, he's saying he'll talk about money, either in ETH or in dollars. Whatever. He doesn't care about art. Oh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. What, whatever. It's a it's a reputation and answer yeah. at the end of the day. So okay. so so that's how a lot of people will look at it. But but like Crazy. we've talked a lot a lot on NFTs, <laughs> art part of it. We know it's going to go towards ownership also, etc. But where does Live Club come in now? Of, of course, you have a uh, you have a Goblin Town. You know the art side of it. You know the PFP collection part of it. How does Live Club come into the picture? What is Live Club doing? What is the agenda? Here? What is the vision? Here? Cool. Uh, the again the idea of Believe Club uh, didn't strike like at the very first of it. 
we started wanted like we really wanted to do something uh, in the nft space mm. the idea always starts from nft marketplace but by the end of the thought itself we discarded it because <laughs> there were already plenty of people yeah, fighting this niche market that yeah. they want to build yeah. the next billion dollar market for madhubani art and that will go on the yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. nft and all yeah. these nft marketplace and stuff so this was the idea like when we continuously keep pressing us now what and what like why will be people interested in our idea then we continuously keep shape shifting the idea then we stopped at one point where we thought that okay this is looks like futuristic but it is not that futuristic because mm. people have taken the taste of such markets in the past they know what happens when such market establishes itself and they know what kind of scale such markets can achieve so the idea of belief club is building derivatives on top of nfts now cut to the version 1 of this idea it's the conventional market mm -hmm. conventional market when they establishes itself into let's say securities stocks were actually everybody is comfortable with stocks then i'm sure the government must have thought okay some or some good economists must have come with an idea hey now this good amount of people is investing money in stocks mm. why can't we build something else which doesn't involve the direct linkages to this and what what can we do with that market which doesn't involve directly ownership of those assets but really want the price volatility they want people to give the exotic avenues to actually play in the market be in the market and actually make money or lose money uh from the price volatility part so that's how they build let's say stocks uh, on top of stocks they build options futures and all these yeah. all these things that's what the derivative markets in version 1 stock market everybody understand the value of it version 2 is crypto when crypto established established itself then people started building the perpetuals on top of it uh the bucket uh like this started selling mutual fund type of thing Yeah. then the then that you market can, would be something case. like a small case small, small case small out case. of it mm. and all these things so this is version 2 version 3 comes that we are in a transition right now of course we are asking this this foundational question whether it's an art or technology art mm. or technology but at least the camel will sit on one side right that that it will rest somewhere right the the mm. the, the market will settle at least on will agree or the community will agree or will will vote with their money on one side mm -hmm. either they will say that okay it's art or whether it will mm -hmm. say it's technology but we mm -hmm. personally feel that this will the idea will stick maybe not in the current form of nft because the technology is nowhere mm -hmm. it's it's not going anywhere the technology will stay mm -hmm. maybe maybe not in the current form but will some in some other way but the mm -hmm. idea of nft will stick and once this sticks and the market establishes itself mm -hmm. then people will look for these exotic option which is easier for people to enter into mm. because they can just buy let's say the most blue chip nft in just as as little as 1 dollar mm. of course fractionalization is there but fractionalization didn't take place the way they it was supposed to oh, so, okay so the belief club is not about fractionalization <coughs> nah. but like converting into a derivative and having an alternate Yes, like futures and alternate on yes. let's say a board event. Correct, correct. Like yeah. we we wanted to go that way, but what the first product that we are building is we are building floor perpetuals. Mm -hmm. We are allowing people to ex, ex, get an exposure, get a price volatility mm -hmm. exposure in as little as one dollar in the margin sort of arrangement. Like people can chip in the money in the margin account, they can actually get up to ten x leverage, can mm -hmm. lo go long and short. Because mm -hmm. today, if I ask you, can you make money? by the nuance that mm. you have mm. about the nft market that okay the board ape is going to go down can you make mm. money on that no no today with believe we will try to make that a possibility so that's mm. where people will be interested in actually making money on either either side of the movement of the market mm. yeah. then then and and people and there is a in in curiosity mm. of people mm. to keep looking for these exotic avenues to keep trying new money making yeah. uh, mm. markets mm. right mm. so that's where we are satiating that thirst of people who actually want to go ahead have an exposure of these blue chip mm. uh, projects still want to make money but mm. without getting not getting into into the problem of like uh, like owning the nft yeah. transferring it 
partial NFT, not partial NFT and all these things. Mm -hmm. So we are creating that a layer. People will not be exposed. So think about it from an asset class perspective. So mm -hmm. we are thinking that we are building a new asset class. We mm -hmm. are simply saying that we are giving a, sing, uh, a very simple avenue mm -hmm. for a normal person to invest their money in a very different exotic asset class. Mm. So we are not even talking about NFT and all these things. Mm. We can simply say that it's a, it's a new financial product that you can mm. buy into. Mm. So that this is what you mean by democratizing it for Absolutely. the... For, for With the one, $1 dollar, we, that the, 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 the point that we say that we can actually allow people to get into the whole Believe Club's products yeah. in one dollar, I think that by that way we are actually trying to democratize. But Me because so. help you understand, like from technology point of view, let's say we take an example of a Bode, which is at the hundred ETH. Yes. So like today I cannot buy let, uh, exactly a hundred ETH. Yes. Mm. So what will happen? Are you gonna buy that NFT mm -hmm. and uh, how are you going to convert that into number of shares? Mm. So what's the mathematics? So, so these things comes in into the problem when when actually you try to create a mutual fund kind of a product on mm. top of it. Mm. We also started with that, okay. mm. but we didn't. Why? Because we immediately understood the problem. Mm. Because first of all, there are certain problems. You are uh, you are like you have a glass ceiling of how much money that you can put into yeah. buying yeah. the original yeah. 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 So let's say we raised a very small amount. We cannot buy, let's say back then we couldn't raise even two, let's say two board a piach club. Hmm. Right. Hmm. Then what will happen? Like who will build the, right. build the product. So that, that was the problem. Second problem hmm. is like, what, what if like the person makes money? How will we get the money? We will have hmm. to sell the asset, right. bring the more money and right. then we pay. Correct. But yeah. then, other people among let's they say except to. except Paris don't want to like take an right. exit. Right. What we do in that case? So all these problems immediately comes when mm. we started thinking that everything when everything is asset backed, mm. right? So we right. dropped the idea, for like not dropped we paused it mm. because we will we will get in we will bring in pseudo swap, pseudo yeah. swap like a mechanism, okay. but in the future not mm. not today. So, so because specifically yes. uh, to to build that kind of a fraction like that said. Mm -hmm. Is it necessary to own that asset mm -hmm. or you can just peg it by mirroring the actual assets price mm -hmm. on open market mm -hmm. and then trying to create a mirror image of the same and let the trading happen. So we are exactly so, doing this thing. When, yeah. Once we understood the problem there, then we immediately came in onto this uh, hey, that our idea cannot be an asset backed. Yeah. Today, yeah. Today. Because, yeah. because to make the idea workable mm -hmm. and to make the idea uh, see the sunlight, mm. we need to take some internal pivots. Mm. Mm. So we said that boss, it is not going to be asset backed. Mm. It is first of all, yes. it is going to be, it's not going to be asset backed. It will be in synthetic, expo it will be a synthetic exposure. Yeah. Exactly yeah. like the way you Makes mentioned. Yeah. So that's why, that's how we started. Then. Yeah. So we, we first, we researched a lot on this one, like mm. how to make that a possibility. Okay. Even before that, we start, we, we banged our head, like how to make a reliable index. Mm. in the mm. nft ecosystem because mm. what if because everything starts with an index if mm. you can build an index you can actually build the whole market on top of it mm. right. because mm. everything is is a, is a derivative of that index yeah right so we started thinking first we go for index then we started uh, 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 thinking about this idea and then we actually settled on this one because yeah. we could see the clear picture in this one yeah that's that first of all no that delivery mm. second Anybody can take an exit at any point of time yes. whenever they want to. Yeah. We cannot actually say that boss, uh, mm. you are sorry, we will give you the delivery after two days or X number of days. Mm. We can't do that. And today, whatever we are building is completely non-custodial. We, anybody can connect their wallet mm. and uh, by the virtue of which uh, that we are launching it on Polygon so that the gas price is also not going to mm. be a botheration sure. for mm. people. Mm. Sure. So again, we are trying to be really, really... Uh, uh, like grounded in a way that a very little very little with very little investment can people people can actually get into these kind of asset classes so these choices design choices of the of the of the building of that financial product and the choices of the technical part of it is allowing those small small improvements or a small mm -hmm. small decision accumulatively makes us very very uh, optimistic about the product as well as its future where we, we think that the world would love to actually have an easy exposure or easy layer on top of this complex, I would say. Hmm. Today it's complex, but tomorrow I don't know about this thing, but a complex asset class. Yeah, that is a actually a brilliant idea with respect to the synthetic exposure because um, in, in re, uh, and I come uh, and I have some exposure to real estate as well. Awesome. So in terms of uh, real estate as well, right? 
uh, whenever a product uh, real estate product needs to be built on top of some kind of an asset Correct. they only build the first layer yeah. asset back and then all the double a triple a subprime loans and then mm. transferring it to all of that is just synthetic exposure backed on the previous one correct so so something like this will happen in nft space exactly and mm. and why could this not be done with a prediction protocol it can be done with a prediction it will be a zero sum game sorts that mm. i predict that board will go eth yes. one eth up mm. <coughs> predict it will go mm. one eth down mm. we both put one dollar mm. each and one mm. of us takes mm. a dollar so yes. we take a take rate so these things these things can be done in multiple ways mm. so we wanted to uh, build it in this way the way we are executing it okay uh, when you do let's say a betting mechanism mm. that's a different way to look at it okay. the same problem can be solved in multiple ways it can be it's a, it's a very good point that can we can build this whole thing like this way but we think like uh, the most capital efficient way will be this one because people will get true prices which is coming from the market mm. and it will be really hard for me to say that boss uh, how do we do that in a very like a completely non no intrusive way mm. so for me mm. and again this is where web3 part is very important yes, again, there has to be trustless and non constitutive and in your idea i would say that we could also again this is a decision where we could actually do this whole thing with one project that's why we did not do with one project we took five blue chip nft we aggregated the floor price in a in a mm. simple way mm. that's how we did it mm. so you cannot do this thing in the prediction market you prediction Got market mm. can actually help us discover the price or like bet on the certain uncertainty or certainty of the events in the future but what we want is people should feel that they are actually getting closer to the let's say the asset what we, whatever we are displaying mm-hmm. so if we are saying that we are taking this composition of bayc mayc azuki doodles and moonbirds then people should feel that okay this price whatever mm-hmm. we are exposed to it is actually the real mm-hmm. aggregated price of this yeah. thing the in in your thing i <coughs> can actually do a mm-hmm. flash bot attack Mm. to make the trade in my favor mm. so that and way i'm saying that uh, it's not the it's not the cap- most capital efficient way because smarter people can actually fool you in the yeah. the right time yeah and and this price index you will mm. be using a oracle or yes. Uh, yes yes okay because and now this is where the technological let's say journey will help us will push us to solve some problems for from the infrastructure side in mm. a very novel ways because mm. consider it is a it's a journey which which are not like a lot of people are taking right now but i would say that whatever the journey that we are taking it is we are bumping into the novel problems mm. price feed not available for these many people yeah. in an aggregated way okay yeah. then it's not there let's use chain chain link keepers yeah. do create our own uh, price mm. feed and mm. like do it on chain mm. so yeah. that anybody else can also build on top of it if they yeah. want to yeah. and it is again trustless because sure. we are not like saying boss we calculated it and you we did it you can point in time also calculate by your pen and paper and we can also calculate by our algorithms and the same price will come and reflect on chain mm. because mm. point in time at that time the price was this mm. but but how do you solve for liquidity in this case like imagine, liquidity will be a will be yes, there has yes. to be a taker in yeah, this yeah, yeah. case no? yes so the the protocol whenever you so think about it any any market which equal which require maker taker mm. every time you require if you you launch certain certain exchange you require mm. like the liquidity yes. and all these things so market makers yes yeah. so there will be mm. people there will be there will yeah. be things that we will try to ensure that mm. that your orders do not sit on the and it's an order book so it should not sit in the order book for long we will will try to make sure that the liquidity is mm. uh, after discussing with too many people they will they would love to actually try out the product so we will also when the beta will come mm. we will keep the price range in a very let's say less than 100 dollars mm. so that people can actually yeah, just yeah. try out the product mm. with 100 dollars mm. right also, or 10 dollars also if you have less number of yeah. things to invest in liquidity won't be Concent- that big a challenge yeah, the concentration, concentration. Yeah. so and yeah, and yes. we personally feel because it will be the first product so we are calling <coughs> it the supernova oh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> alpha 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 so alpha means like a tip that you get before something launches so do try so, believe club so so we are we are calling it that and uh, because we feel that it is going to explode and and the market is going to explode and the the let's say i would say uh halving is going to come and then yes. market will explode yeah. so that, i think that is what we all are looking yeah, forward so to the, 2024 <laughs> <laughs> quarter third <laughs> yeah quarter third whenever that happens yes 
so i think i think these things are making us excited that mm. we are solving some novel problems from the mm. infrastructure side as well and we are trying to solve these things in such a way that actually it becomes reusable for the community as well so that mm. it doesn't become like a ip in such a way that we cannot share it mm. and even if we will share it of course we will we will put a rent so that people can actually use it by paying the rent and well love lovely yes, having you thank, thank you so much vikas thank you thank you so much everyone all right thank you. see you bye, bye.